Welcome to Real Shame. It's a weekly film podcast where we go over our film blind spots. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. So last time we talked, we talked about Rock and Roll High School. And we wanted to pair with that another movie, another kind of high school comedy. What movie did we choose? Fast Times at Ridgemont High from 1982. I'll take care of everything. I don't have a minute. You've made me late enough. I am so tired of dealing with incompetence. It says 100% guaranteed, you moron. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kick 100% of your ass. Uh, is there a problem here? Can I help you, sir? So we've both seen Fast Time at Rick Mahon mm-hmm. before, right? Been, and, been a while, but yeah. Yeah. And it uh, was written by Cameron Crowe, and it's from a book that he wrote, yes. if, I, if I remember correctly. Right, because he was a teen reporter basically for rolling stone and some other rock magazines almost course, famous right almost yeah. famous is a biographical or it's an autobiographical movie about him and he decided to i guess he skipped his last couple of years of high school something like that and this was an opportunity for him to go back incognito <laughs> to, to high school and he actually pulled a spider-man yeah exactly <laughs> and, and and go undercover and write a book about uh, the high school yeah. Uh, high experience. school experience. There, yeah, there you yeah. go. That's the word I'm looking for. So, Fast Times at Ridgemont High was the result. So, it's been years since I've seen this. You know, it's one of those movies that you just hear about, right? Like that with Days and the Confused. You know, they're just these high school movies that are like tent poles. Yep. And so, I've seen in the past because I've heard so much about it. But also for me, it's been a while since I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember liking the movie a lot better than I currently like it. Oh, really? Yeah. I was actually the exact opposite. I, oh, really? I, I liked it the first time I saw it, but I think I really liked it this time, yeah. So for me, I think of those kind of movies of that ilk, at least movies that are set in the past, I think Days and Confused I like the best out of all Love of them. Days and Confused, yeah. Um, so this one, it was really slow for me. Like I felt, you know, the stuff through the mall and everything just felt really, really slow. And it just it, it felt like it never really got going. And the other thing is it's more, I would consider it more like an American graffiti kind of movie mm-hmm. where it's more of a, like a slice of life, right? There's no really plot that's kind of driving the movie along or anything. It's more just like, let's show what these uh, teenagers in high school's lives are like. You know, there's no really big conflict or you know, any kind of change that the characters kind of go through. I guess you can argue a little bit about Jennifer Jason Lee's character yeah, a little I bit. Say, I would say she definitely goes through a conflict, yeah. yeah. But it's not really like, I don't feel like it's the backbone of the movie. Yeah. So, all right, I've talked a little bit. Why don't you jump on and... Uh, I, I don't see it that way. Uh, I, I, I do agree with you in, in that it doesn't necessarily have a, a super strong plot, yeah. right? I mean, it, it does jump from person to person and kind of how they intersect, just like American Graffiti does. Yeah. And I, and I think you, you definitely can say the same thing about American Graffiti. It's not super strong on story. Some people have criticized it for being, oh, it's just a movie where people cruise around in cars or whatever. I think it's it's much more than that and much better than that. I mean, I think American Graffiti is a classic. But yeah. Fast Times at Richmond High, I, I felt like it it was I, I was never bored with it. I was definitely bored with Rock and Roll High School. Yeah, yeah. I was never really bored with Fast Times at Richmond High. I felt like it... It jumped around enough from character to character. And I liked these characters in this movie. I think that has a, a big thing to do with it. I like Judge Reinhold's character. Yeah. I like Jennifer Jason Lee's character. And I felt sorry for her character because, you know, she's just trying to be like her friend played by Phoebe Cates. She yeah. wants to have sex. She wants to lose her virginity. She wants to have a boyfriend, all of those things. And unfortunately, it doesn't go so well for her. But I, one thing, additional thing I like about Jennifer Jason Lee's character is... She, first of all, loses her virginity to a much older guy in his 20s or whatever. He's a stereo salesman in a very... (laughs) <laughs> uh, by a very unromantic way, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. She's she's looking up at graffiti while while <laughs> while it's happening. Uh, but later on, when the nerd character in the film, the rat character, Brett, yeah. Brent Ratner, Brett Ratner, Brett, yeah. not Brett Ratner, uh, <laughs> no, not the Mark director. Ratner, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the cast list here. I, I, I suppose I should look. Mark, yes, there, Mark, Mark Rat Ratner. Uh, <laughs> when he asks her out. She says yes. I mean, she yeah. doesn't just go, oh, this guy's a nerd or whatever. I like the fact that she gave him a chance. And she genuinely did want to go out with him. Of course, he gets cold feet and runs out on her on their first yeah. date. Uh, and his buddy, his sleaze bag buddy, Damone. Yeah, Damone. So, yeah, Mike Damone comes in. And uh, unfortunately... Did you uh, see the postscript where apparently he never had sex with her? Or they were taking it slow, I guess, is what yeah, the postscript said. I did, said. yeah, yeah. I didn't know... I. 
I've read the character list where they call him the rat, but I didn't know that was the rat character. Well, it's weird. Like, they don't, they don't really like. call him that yeah, yeah. in the movie too much, do yeah. they? I mean, I, they no. probably mention it once or twice. So, yeah, at the end when it says rat does, yeah. you know, this is what happened to rat. I was like, rat? When did they call him that? I guess I missed <laughs> yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Well, we, we, we got to talk about Sean Penn. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, but I want to... Yeah. But yeah. I wanted to do one thing real quick if okay. we can if we can digress sure, just sure, there. Sure. Cuz I was going to say like it's the one thing that kind of caught me a little bit in the movie that caught me mostly by surprise was I really felt for the teacher. <laughs> Maybe that's I, I love to my Mr. Age. Han. You're talking about Mr. Yes, Han, right? Mr. Yeah, Han. I love Mr. Han. And I thought it was Mr. Han, but I guess <laughs> that's Mr. Hat. Yeah. So I was incorrect in that. Yeah. But I felt really like he was the person I connected to the most and I feel like You're I'm You're getting old. <laughs> I feel so old saying that. Like I, do, I don't like that. And that's the case. But he is a, he is a great teacher. Like he is like teacher of the year I, kind of yeah. stuff. I agree. I know. I I like his character. I like. He's played by Ray Walston. He was my favorite Martian on television for yeah. a long time. I love his character because he's sensible. Yes. And and even though you know you love Spicoli yes. and these other guys in, in the film. You can see where he's coming from. And again, maybe that's just a, a product of getting older or whatever. Yeah. You go, oh, all these young whippersnappers or whatever. But no, I liked his character as well. And I think he plays it very well and he's genuinely funny yes. in his own way, yes. even though he doesn't really have comedic lines. But the way that he kind of sternly talks down to Spicoli and it's some hilarious. of the other students is, is pretty funny. Yeah, I, no, the, I like his character a lot. The I don't know part where he's like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> writes it on the board. Yeah, writes it on the board. He's like, I'm going to attribute this to you all day. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. The part, like, it almost, like, I almost broke up at it was, um, like, it got a little dusty, was when he showed up to Spicoli's right before the yeah. prom mm -hmm. and, like, sat with him. He's like, you've wasted eight hours of my time, so I'm going to waste your take time. take eight hours of your time. Yeah. And, like, but then, you you know, and then you cut to the party and everyone's having fun, but then you cut back and, like, you have Spicoli kind of talking about American history, U.S. history, in his own kind of California surfer, surfer dude way. way. Yeah. But like, it feels like Mr. Han actually like imparted some knowledge on him he, and like actually, actually had an impact. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, that was just like, that got me like that. Yeah. I really felt that like, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. That was a nice part of the movie. I like that as well. But Absolutely. You, so I wanted to digress real quick. Sure. Cause I was thinking about that, but Spicoli. Spicoli, obviously Sean Penn, he had been in at least one other movie before this, maybe Taps, I think, uh, maybe something else. But I think this was the, you know, you know, I don't know how many people saw Taps when it came out, but definitely <laughs> a lot of people it. saw Fast <laughs> Times at Ridgemont High. And so this is the movie that catapulted him. Because everybody, when you, you mention Fast Times at Ridgemont High, who do they mention? Spicoli. Jeff Spicoli, the surfer dude. So he definitely stands out in this movie. And I love the fact that his stoner buds are Eric Stoltz. <laughs> And Anthony Edwards, yeah. uh, those are his two stoner friends, uh, so that's nice. A, a lot of people in this movie went on to do Nick tons Cage. and tons of things. Nicolas Cage, yeah. credited as Nicolas Coppola yep. Yep. On, on screen, and he doesn't have any lines at all, right? It just shows him for about yeah. two seconds. Well, because he was underage. Oh, okay. So the so he lied about his age. I think he it was he lied that he was 18 so he can get in a, a much bigger role, mm. but then they found out he was like 17 or 16, so I don't think they gave him as many lines. Gotcha. Because, you know, uh, minors can't work as long as, as that. But also, I read on the trivia that uh, Nicholas Coppola, maybe this is the reason why he changed his name, would talk about how his dad, or his uncle is Francis Ford Coppola, and how he's going to make it as a bigger star than all the other actors. And supposedly the cast razzed him about that because he was very high on himself being a Coppola and all stuff like that. Mm. Jerk. <laughs> so, isn't like... Um, isn't um, Spicoli, I, what's the actor again? <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean Penn. Penn. Isn't he known as a method actor? Yes. Yeah, so so he, <laughs> did he get called Spicoli like yeah. all the he, time? He actually like went that? to high school and ordered, sat down and ordered a pizza <laughs> in class and he took serving lessons. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he was quite method back then, uh, but it would be hilarious if he was and he actually uh, entered surf competitions and stuff like that in order to prepare for his role. Yeah, that yeah. Just great. like spent six months like surfing and like <laughs> living on the beach as like a beach bum and stuff like that yeah. to get used to it. Uh, another one of the teachers in the film that I wanted to point out was Vincent Schia Schiavelli. I hope I'm saying that correct. He's, is that the biology teacher? The biology yeah. teacher. He's got a very, very distinctive look. Uh, his, uh, he's, he's in the film. True they, lies. They actually go, yeah, they, and they actually go, it, it, 
visit the hospital or the morgue or whatever where they're going to look at corpses. Yes. The doctor that is there is played by Martin Brest, who directed, wait for it, Beverly Hills Cop. He directed the first one, right? The first one he did, which with Judge Reinhold, who of course is in yep. Fast Times at Richmond High. He directed Scent of a Woman, Hua, <laughs> Al Pacino. He directed he won a, Pacino won an Oscar for that, right? Yes, that's where the reason why he does that all the oh, time now. He did, he did, he did, he directed Meet Joe Black, and the last thing film he directed was Gili. Oh, he hasn't done anything since then. But maybe <laughs> the fact that he directed Gili is the reason why he hasn't done anything since then. I don't know, but I thought I would point that out. Also, the biology teacher, who's Mr. Vargas, is his yeah. name, by the way. His wife is played by Lana Clarkson, who unfortunately was on the receiving end of a. Uh, Bullet <laughs> from Phil Spector. I don't know why you're going to break that. One. I don't know. Uh, the, the thing I read about her was she was actually younger than J- Jennifer Jason Leigh. Right. Yeah. She was She was young. She's, so, but she plays his wife in yeah. the film. So that's, it's such a weird high school field trip to have to go to a morgue <laughs> and all. I thought the same thing. I thought this, I would, I never did that. In Do you high think school. that actually happened very, to I, Cameron Crowe? I don't know. I don't know if he, that happened my, or just put that in. My it's favorite bizarre, part though. was when they removed the, uh, the sheet on the, on the corpse. <laughs> His head is like wrapped with like ace bandage or something like that. I'm just like. At least they're giving this dead guy some dignity <laughs> while the we teacher and them prod around and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a very, very odd thing to do. So how do you feel like the depiction of the mall was? Do you? I mean, for me growing up, you know, not to get into too much detail, the mall kind of wasn't the epicenter of everything. Uh, I, I mean, I think it, it definitely was, especially in the 80s, because you yeah. didn't really have a whole lot of stuff to do. I mean, early 80s, so this came out in 1982. I mean, things like Atari did exist, but I don't know how many people actually had one. Yeah. Or, or yeah, I mean, you know, they had arcades. I think they play, actually, the end of the movie that doesn't have Game Over or uh, The End on yeah, like yeah, an yeah, Atari on the, screen yeah, or a yeah. Missile Command uh, arcade game. So, I mean, there's there's definitely that sort of thing was going on. But I think a lot of teenagers did hang out at the mall primarily. Would you then. hang so, out at that mall? Does that seem like the happening place you'd hang out at? Uh, maybe back in 1982, I would have. I, I don't know. Uh, it seemed like a yeah, a cool a cool place. And you got all the different the food court. Uh, they got the pizza place. The pizza they got place. the burger joint. And then all you that had, stuff. Wait, was um, was Judd Reinhold's burger joint at the mall, or well, was that outside was. the mall? Maybe it was. I thought maybe it was outside wasn't. the mall. I don't know. <laughs> he worked at the fire place. I don't know. I'm getting it all confused. Yeah, he did work at the fire place. <laughs> And I love him I love getting fired was awesome. Yes, uh, the that was fact the best he, thing. Yes, that's a very <laughs> funny line in the movie. And when he is driving to deliver the, it's where the and he's got it. He's in his full outfit, his full pirate outfit, and the car that pulls up to him, the driver is Nancy Wilson, who Cameron Crowe would later marry. And, uh, from Heart, divorce. right? Or yeah, yeah, from Heart. Should get it. Yeah, um, the, the, the I like the part too leading up to that where he's like. Completely stripping down the back of the pirate restaurant, and the guy comes out like his manager. He's what like, are you doing? "What are you doing?" He's yeah. like, "You got to represent the company." You're an ambassador like, for the for our pirate yeah. seafood restaurant, whatever. It's what called. did he call his car? Like it was like the surf machine. It was like the cruiser or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, it was really weird. I don't remember. It was like a it was fifties, and you know, I look at it, I'm like, "Oh, that's a classic car," but then I'm trying to remember like. You know, that car was 30 years old at the time, so I guess it was a beater back then. It's not as cool as it is, like, now in the, you know, 2020s, yeah. looking at a, you know, 50, a car that's made in the 50s kind of stuff. So we haven't mentioned Phoebe Cates much. She plays Jennifer Jason Lee's kind of friend yeah. who who is more experienced. She has, what, a fiancé in Chicago. I wanted to ask yeah. you about that. Yeah. I don't think the fiancé was ever real. Uh, it may not have been. Because I think, like, for me, it's more of an interesting kind of character trait if she's, like, putting on this air, putting on this kind of uh, two Jennifer Jason Lee things that she's so experienced. Because some of the things that Jennifer Jason Lee repeats or things that she says to Jennifer Jason Lee makes me think that maybe he doesn't exist, but definitely don't think they ever had sex. Because when she they're having a conversation, she's like, oh, how she, long yeah. does he last? And she's like, oh, he lasts, like... 40 minutes or she says 30 minutes. She goes, but last time you said 40 minutes and she's like, Oh, oh I wasn't yeah. paying attention. He lasted yeah. 40 minutes. Like, I definitely don't think they, they copulated. They, they did it. They did the deed. Yeah. But I also don't think he existed because he be. was always out of town. 
like that. And then well, she he's, can, I think he supposedly worked uh, in Chicago or wherever. Yeah, I think he was like city. a flight attendant. Yeah, yeah, he worked uh, on the air, airline or something. Yeah. So I just I think that's an interesting. I I hope he doesn't exist because I think that's an interesting nice kind of more. character trait to her. Yeah. Well, the problem is though, I don't know how many. I don't know if that comes across in him. I just assumed he was real, yeah. but they actually had had didn't never really did anything, or maybe it was just somebody that she was infatuated with that didn't really return the same affection. But who yeah. knows? I, I, you could interpret it either way. I mean, he's never shown on screen, and you don't ever hear from him. So I don't know. May may not be around at all. And then we have a uh, rat who works at the movie theater, mm -hmm. and I guess in he's an usher. Because he's out there you know, taker, taking, yeah. doing tickets ticket and stuff taker. like that. Yep. And then uh, you have Damone, right? Who's like, I guess he his side hustle is um, selling concert tickets. Selling concert tickets. Uh, so you this, get Van Halen tickets for what, $10 or something like $20? Yeah. So this in Rock and Roll High School, I'm shocked how cheap tickets are. Yeah. So Rock and Roll High if School, only. she buys, uh, Riff Randall buys uh, 100 tickets for $1,000. <laughs> So it's like ten dollars a ticket. Yeah, and I'm like, how does she have a thousand dollars big? Like, I wondered that myself. Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah. gosh, she's got a lot of money for a yeah. high school girl. I, I certainly never had that much money then. And then we we didn't talk about um, Forrest Whitaker and yeah. his love for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes, yes. <laughs> in this movie, yes, nice to see Forrest Whitaker in an yeah. early role. I thought it was, and the other thing I thought it was hilarious was, uh, like the the one part of the movie that kind of like got me like really amped up and like really nervous was Bacoli driving the car while, oh. while drunk or was he drunk or high? Probably both. Probably both. Yeah. Like that, that I was like, I just felt my, like my blood pressure rise yeah. and like, I started like sweating. Like I oh, started no. having like a very physical response to that. Yeah. And again, maybe that speaks more for my age. Cause I'm sure back, you know, when I was 16, I'm like, Oh, that's hilarious. But now I'm just like, Oh no, he's gonna scratch this gonna this Camaro, out. right? This awesome looking Camaro and stuff like that. But I thought it was so hilarious that you know he spoiler alert, but basically he um, runs it off the road and crashes it in the like construction site, and they took it out without um, Force's character knowing that they were gonna take it out, and so they parked it in front of the school. Who, who knows how they did that? I guess they got yeah. someone to tow totally or something tow like that. There, yeah. But they put that the rival high school, which I think was. Lincoln, it was Lincoln High. Lincoln High was the uh, was the people that did it, right? And a little uh, Saved by the Bell kind of. It, it was Lincoln High because they they have posters in the movie that are like Kill Lincoln and Assassinate Lincoln or something, right? That, and it's a yes dig at Abraham Lincoln. I I don't know what what that choice was because that like that threw me for a loop when I was That's, seeing. That seems like something that belongs more in Rock and Roll High School. Yes, than it does. In yes, Fast Times at that totally like threw me for yeah. a loop when they were like, "Hey, those like Kill Lincoln." I'm just yeah. like, "Whoa, wait, what?" what? <laughs> Doing? What are we oh, talking? They about? already did that. That's <laughs> too late. Sorry. So, um, but yeah, was that one of his first movies? Do you know about Forrest Whitaker? I, I, yeah, I think so. I, 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 you know, he may have done something before that, but I, that's probably the earliest thing I think yeah. I've seen him in. So, what else do you, um, do you feel about um, Fast Time Original High, and or do you have anything uh, else you like to add about the about it? Well, it, I mean, it kind of. Circling back around to when we first started talking, I, I do feel like I enjoy the movie more now than I did then. I think that the humor, because I, I think I watched it, I don't know how long ago it was, but at the time I, I was probably a little more picky about, yeah. you know, older films, and whatnot. And I just, the humor didn't land for me. A lot of the humor didn't land for me. But this time, I actually laughed a lot. I, I mean, I don't necessarily remember a ton of specific lines mm -hmm. where I laughed, but I thought it was very, very humorous. I enjoyed it. Again, I felt like it jumped around from character to character quickly enough to where I was never like, okay, guys, let's, yeah. let's, let's hurry up and move this along. And again, the mixture of the comedy that it has, you know, he's dressing up as a pirate. He's going to kick 100% of his ass. Whatever the and then the seriousness, the the storyline that Jennifer Jason Lee has to deal with and getting pregnant. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, I mean that's. I think it has a good mixture of of funny and sweet and yeah. sad and. But it's never uber depressing. Yeah. You're never like, oh my goodness, yeah. you know, this is just. Yeah, I feel like they keep they definitely keep it light enough. Particularly every time Spicoli's on screen, yeah. they keep it light enough to where I, it's a fun, brisk, enjoyable, uh, funny movie. And I thought it was awesome when Judge Reinhold's character looked back and he saw his sister wasn't yeah. going the bowling alley. Yeah. And then he's there to pick her up. Like, I yeah. thought that was really cool. It's not judgmental. But I feel like, 
and maybe like thinking about this movie, you know, now instead of when I was watching it, I felt like that abortion she had didn't really have an impact on her. But maybe now when we're talking about it and knowing that post credit or that that's postscript mm-hmm. when they said they took it slow, maybe that means that she kind of learned her lesson. Yeah. But it did feel like to me like that was just kind of like as soon as he brought her home or he picked her up, it like kind of ended. Like there was no nothing with that that continued with that, you know? Yeah, and and, and they, they definitely don't kind of go more into the after yeah. effects of what of what happened. But I suppose if they did, it would make for a more depressing yeah. kind of film. And I guess Rat and Damone kind of had a falling out a little bit because didn't they fight at prom if I remember correctly? Uh, yeah, they're, they're about to they're fight, about to fight in, the, yeah. in the locker room. Yeah. But they, they do end up making up, yeah, and getting to be friends again. So for me, I see this movie's fingerprints on a lot of movies I like. So I like Mallrats. I see that. You know, I like Days and Confused. I can kind of see, you know, a lot of movies that kind of took this and jumped from it. Um, I don't not like it, but it's not as great as I remember. Um, I'm hoping on revisiting it, I'll like it more. So do you have a favorite Cameron Crowe movie off the top of your head? My favorite Cameron Crowe movie is without a doubt... Singles. Singles. Absolutely. I love singles. I love that whole, that grunge scene. Oh, yeah. Matt Dillon's character in that. That's a great film. I love it. Seen it many times. I watched Singles recently. Uh, I watched it over the summer because we talked, we had this conversation Mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, reality bites and 80s movies. And I thought Singles was pretty good. And I definitely like the rock of it. You know, you have Chris Cornell in it and stuff like that. Allison Chains. Allison Chains. Yeah. A lot of those 90s grunge bands are present. So for me, you know, I don't think it's going to be any surprise, but Almost Famous is probably my favorite Cameron Crowe movie. I just like that behind the scenes, you know, kind of autobiographical story. And I like seeing this band interact and with them. Um, I feel like characters. I need to revisit, and maybe we can do this down the road. I need yeah. to revisit Almost Famous because I haven't seen it in a long time. And when I saw it, which is only the one time, I was not as impressed with it as everyone else seems to be. So maybe I need to give it another shot. Yeah. So with each of these episodes, we kind of want to get a chance to get feedback from our viewers. So please email us at realshame at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram. So what I did was I went ahead and pulled a viewer question that I wanted to ask and we can get our opinion on. So the viewer question is, what gets you excited about new movies? For me, it's uh, maybe kind of a cheat, but I think it's a lot of things. It's not really just one thing. Uh, Primarily, obviously, we go to the movies a lot. We Mm -hmm. see a lot of the trailers, and we see a lot of the same trailers (laughs) over and over and over again. But I I hate to discount trailers because definitely I could get excited from seeing a trailer the first time. Yeah. And when I've seen it the 50th time or the 100th time, and then obviously I'm exaggerating some, but when I've seen it many, many times... Dunkirk, I swear we saw 50 times. I, at least. <laughs> when I've seen it many, many times, I'm starting to get a, a little sick of it at that yeah. point. But probably... I don't know... I, I mean, I have some favorite actors and actresses. So, you know, if, if I see one of them doing a movie or maybe somebody who doesn't act a lot, like, I mean, Joe Pesci yeah. coming out of retirement or whatever to do The Irishman, something like that. If Gene Hackman suddenly came out of retirement to do a film, he hasn't done anything since Welcome to Mooseport, I think. If he came out of retirement, I'd be like, oh, yeah, Jack Nicholson, somebody like that. I think that. he did uh, Enemy of the State after Mooseport. No, I think it was before. <laughs> it's before. I, I believe that's the last thing he's done. And that was 16 years ago. Yeah. But uh, probably actor, actress, or director, you know, because I'm a fan of yeah. Scorsese. I'm a fan of Paul Thomas Anderson. I- anything those guys do, I'm going to see, even if it doesn't necessarily look good in the trailer. Yeah. But that's kind of what gets me I excited. think we can say that for The Phantom Thread, right? I don't think the trailer yeah. for The Phantom Thread got us excited, but no. we did see it because PTA was sure. on the screen. Yeah, yeah. What about you? So for me, it's kind of interesting. This is something I've kind of noticed a little bit about my viewing habits is I care more about the director and the writer of the movie than I do about any of the actors, about anyone from the screen. Because I feel like, like if you look at, let's just pick an actor at random, like Johnny Depp's career, right? It's it, It goes across multiple genres, multiple types of movies, you know, multiple or different various qualities of movies, some better than others, right? He's definitely not very selective anymore, I feel like. And I feel like directors and writers are more consistent. You know, some directors get, you know, you can, some directors, they kind of have a a genre that they like to work in. Some work outside the genre, but I feel like, you know, a director 
the variances in the levels of quality for directors is a lot less than the variances you would have with an actor. Yeah. And I feel like that's even narrower with writers. So if there's a writer or director that I really like, like Thomas McCarthy or that, you know, I'm definitely going to be clued into the next movie they're going to make. And that's what's going to get me more excited than anyone in front of the screen. Gotcha. I, I'm in a weakness. Maybe I have writer blind spots because yeah. I don't know a lot of the writers' names necessarily uh, without you telling me. And a lot of the newer directors, I tend to forget their names or not be as, as familiar with them as I would be as somebody like Martin Scorsese or even you know somebody who's not even with us anymore yeah. like Stanley Kubrick or something like that. I know all their films. I know when they do a film, obviously not Kubrick, but I know when Scorsese or somebody like that does a film. And the newer guys, I, it's not that I don't admire them or don't like them, like the Russo brothers, somebody like that. I just don't always, that's not always at the forefront of my mind. I don't always yeah. think about that first thing. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, and you have some like, you know, A-list or like uh, major league, I don't know, like superstar, I guess is a better analogy of like writers. You know, you have your Aaron Sorkins and, you know, your directors like you list and sure. stuff like that. But, you know, I just find, you know, some movies that are written by, you know, uh, like for example, we talked about Hell or High Water, and you know the same writer wrote Hell or High Water, wrote um, Sicario. Yeah. He's uh, directed movies. He's also he also wrote uh, what was the movie with um, Hawkeye in it? Wind River. Wind River, great movie. Yeah. And those movies are kind of like they're not they don't cover the same subjects, but they're very consistent and they're kind of milieu and stuff like that. So yeah, those, they're very similar. Yeah. Well. Style wise, maybe. Or... So, I figure like we, I figured we answered that question adequately. Maybe I hope so. <laughs> Everything. 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 Is exciting. Yeah. Oh. Just show us shiny things, and we'll yeah. get into it. Yeah. So next week, what movie are we p- picking to watch? We are going to pick one that is on your list of shame. It is a film from 1967. Iconic role for Dustin Hoffman. Iconic role for Anne Bancroft as Mrs. Robinson. Oh, it's not Gentleman, Officer and Gentleman. <laughs> not Officer and a Gentleman. No, killer soundtrack by Simon and Garfunkel, very well known. It is, of course, The Graduate. I have not seen The Graduate. I've seen it many times. I'm, I'm very prepared to talk about it. I love it. I'm very nervous to watch it. Let's do it. All right. See you next week. Be sure and subscribe. Yeah, be sure to subscribe. Shoot us an email if you have any questions. Follow us on Instagram. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.